Over at the borehole site, Rob and drill operator Andrew make slow but steady progress across the mountain. We're in about 100 feet. We've got a ways. We're looking at a little over 900 feet to our target, so we're a little over a tenth of the way there. The horizontal drill is their last option to reach metal deposits identified below the waterfall. Knowing where the treasure is is one thing. Getting to the treasure is something else. Since environmental restrictions prevent them from digging at the waterfall, they're drilling horizontally 930 feet through the mountain towards the void space so they can feed in a borehole camera. There's lots of borehole cameras that will make it 930 feet to see exactly what we've hit. For the three-inch drill to hit the void space from 930 feet away, it must maintain pinpoint accuracy. I'm getting more and more anxious because as we move further in, our ability to make a correction starts to shrink down by a lot. If the drill is knocked off course by even a few degrees, it could miss the void entirely by the time it reaches target depth. So about how long are you thinking until we pull the next sample? Why is that pull it down? Mike's up. Pull it down, please. They need to constantly monitor coarse soil samples taken by the drill to ensure the bore hasn't shifted. If the samples stay the same, they know they are on the right directional track for the void. We're about to pull about another four and a half feet of a core sample. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it's that exact consistent type of rock that we know is going to keep us on a straight path. Yeah, we have another small weathered formation here. This is ideal. The less of this, the better. If we can minimize the amount of broken ground, we've got more chance of keeping straight. What are we looking at, Andrew? Uh, this is the last piece we've just pulled out recently. It looks like we're coming into a bit of a uh, fractured formation. Maybe a bit of fault. Yeah, it's like decomposed. So now that I see this, it's a little bit concerning. But things like this might be a little bit of an issue. We just have to monitor it with the survey, mate. That's all we can do when we're working out from there. They also need to monitor any changes that could jeopardize the expensive machinery. We'll just keep a steady course. We don't want to push too hard. Uh, push too hard if it causes to deviate. So just got to keep an eye on this. Rob certainly might be on a lot of pressure here. You know, this is a long shot by far. You know, when you got to drill 900 feet with a little three-inch drill to a little spot, maybe 20 by 20, you know, underneath the waterfall, it's a, it's a hell of a task. I mean, we're not that far in yet. We're only about 100 feet, but with 800 feet to go, anything could happen. Seeing that, Rob? An helicopter coming in. Rick, you seeing that helicopter? We just got buzzed. Yeah, I sure did, John. Uh, he came right over us. Kind of did two little circles right over the top of Breach 6. It's a little disconcerting. I was trying to get my uh, phone camera on it to zoom in to see if I could get numbers, but I... Uh... I was too slow. Copy. Yeah, I see it right there. It's two of them. There's another one behind it. It's the first time they've spotted aerial surveillance in the two years they've worked here. We've been warned about being watched by somebody. They know exactly what you're doing. They know exactly where you are. The team's new partner, experienced treasure hunter Chuck McDougal, also warned them. There are people that are going to observe everything you do. And if and when they think you found a treasure, they, they might step in and uh, either steal it from you or just kill you right then and there. I'm just wondering if they just came in for a quick check on our progress. Copy that. All right, just keep an eye open and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just another damn thing to worry about. If you're going after a treasure like this, chances are somebody's watching. As a result, 
John's hired security to safeguard the perimeters of their work sites. To protect this site, to protect our people, you know, it's best to have the right security team on site. We got security posted on every high point in this place, and I think we're good to go. Treasure hunting in general draws all kinds of people and mostly unwanted people to your site. You know, you put all this time and effort and research into a project to see fruition, and they're just going to wait for you to do all the hard work and then just come in guns a-blazing and take it from you. So anything we can do to avoid that situation is paramount here. Later that day, Rob checks on the horizontal drill. We're over 200 feet in at this point. Everything's going well. The core samples, they all look really good. We're really getting back on track. We're back in the rock we want to be in. To keep the drill bit lubricated so it doesn't overheat and break, water continually cycles in and out of the borehole. So before we had lots of water return, lots of circulation, yeah, yeah. now we've got none, so it's going somewhere else. The water pumping into the borehole has disappeared. Andrew thinks the drill punctured an unexpected void space, which the water is now draining into. But with their waterfall target still 700 feet away, this hole is a complete mystery. Where did it go? Well, it's gone into a formation. I'm not sure where it's gone, Moses. It's gone. We'll test how wide the void is. If it's any more than two to three feet, then we'll have to pull the rod. If the heavy drill bit extends too far into a cavity unsupported, it could snap, particularly if lack of water circulation overheats the bore. This kind of damage could keep them from ever reaching the waterfall. If you don't touch anything after three feet, it's no good. So we'll mark out three feet. We're going to mark out the increments on the rods. He's going to push a section through. We're going to take a measurement and see how far across it takes before we're at something solid. Bring it in, please, mate, slowly, huh? Any resistance? I haven't felt anything yet. If there's something there, you'll feel it. Well, we've, uh, we just went just past three feet, and um, we didn't touch the other side of whatever it is. What do we do now? What happens if we keep going? There's a fair chance that the core barrel will just break clean off the end of the rods. Uh, and it could end the hole. John and Rob set up a borehole camera to examine the mysterious void the drill intersected 200 feet into the mountain. So now that we know we punched into this void space, we want to send the camera all the way down there and see what that anomaly is. That's good. Keep going. That down there. Looks like that's about the end of it there. It's getting, see that dark? Yeah, what is that dark hole? Holy smokes. That's a huge space. I didn't expect that. It's starting to look like a void space more than it is a fault line, Andrew. Well, definitely, it's not a fault. You guys said you hit something, lost some water. I'm figuring you hit a fault line. See if you can twist it a little bit. Hang on. Oh, what is that? What is that? Let me see if I can get a better look at it. Right there. Oh, my God, that is definitely a piece of wood. That's a timber. What would Tina be doing in that? Oh, my God. There's a nail there. You see it? Mm-hmm. That looks like a man-made tunnel. Oh, my God, I can't believe we're seeing